Hi, I'm Caroline Shelton. And I am Noah Burkle with Encounter Shawnee Mission. We are here to present features on schools from all around Shawnee Mission to highlight important events happening in the school district. We take you first to Brookridge Elementary about Breakout Box, a video made by Bella Goddard and Lauren Bass. At Brookridge Elementary, students are learning through breakout boxes how to work together and to problem solve in what could be a real life experience. I think it's really helped um, build cooperation and team building skills in here. They really um, get to work together and realize that um, this is a team effort and if they're not working together then they're not going to be able to break out. Joanna Houston brought this program to Brookridge and the students and teachers equally love it. It's such a big focus on culture and building relationships in Shawnee Mission with students but also with teachers and students working together um, and so I think it has really helped to change the culture of each classroom. Breakout Box helps students identify what they like to do. I liked how it was based off of locks and how you had to try and get out all the locks by only using a certain amount of clues. If I bring it up, you know, remember when we did the breakout box, how, you know, if we didn't work together, how it failed. And so um, I'm able to kind of relate school-related activities um, to the breakout box, and that's able to kind of bring them back in and then, um, you know, remind them that we're going to keep trying and keep doing it. And so I think that's helped them um, build those cooperative skills. Overall, breakout box has brought more unity and teamwork to the students of Brookridge Elementary. Wait, help! I wasn't supposed to be the one locked in. Uh, well, this is Bella Goddard reporting with Encounter Shawnee Mission. Thank you, Bella and Lauren, for that. We move now to Shawnee Mission South High Schools, where its international club displays students and cultures from all over the world. A video by Joe McAtee and Harrison Poland. International Club is a club at Shawnee Mission South that promotes learning about different cultures while also teaching other members about your own. Around each holiday, the club makes handmade crafts and informs members about the upcoming holiday and teaches foreign students American traditions. We interviewed Hiba, a Moroccan exchange student, about her thoughts on the club. I'm actually from Morocco, and for me, the international club is like a great opportunity to meet new people and make new friends. Uh, it really helped me to like get involved at school and hang out with different people. So that was pretty cool. And also we get to know like the cultures. We got to create pumpkins and like do Thanksgiving crafts, which is like really different from my country. As the holiday season approaches, the club begins to inform members of foreign holiday traditions. In International Club, we do different games and activities that deal with holidays in the United States and different holidays throughout the world. Like this year we're doing uh, holidays such as like ones that are celebrated in Morocco, in France, and Germany, and in um, Brazil because that's where our students are from. Caroline, a German exchange student, talks about her experiences with the new American traditions. Some things we just don't have in Germany like Thanksgiving and so I learned to know it and what you are doing here. We in the past have had up to 20 exchange students. I think last year we had like 12, this year we have five, and so it's an opportunity for students at South to get to know other cultures and to integrate those exchange students. And also for, um, in the spring, the exchange students start presenting and sharing their culture more, whereas fall is more like we share our culture. The International Club is excited to keep teaching members about upcoming holidays and to learn more about the foreign students' culture. This has been Harrison Poland and Joe McAtee reporting with Encounter Shawnee Mission. Wow, those kids must work really hard to learn all those cultures. And down at Trailwood Elementary, students are working hard during Mrs. Post's Genius Hour on whatever subject they choose to study. John Buss and Michael Carter have the story. At Trailwood Elementary School, fourth grade teacher Ellie Post was inspired to instill a Genius Hour into the students' weekly regimens. This hour allows students to pick a topic of their choice and study what they are truly passionate about rather than having their learning confined to a syllabus. So what we decided to do here in my classroom and, and the other fourth grade classroom is do Genius Hour here where the students are empowered to come up with a passionate idea and we feel that if they're empowered with their learning and they get to choose what they want to work on and learn, then their productivity will go up here at school. Students have an endless supply of topics to pick from. For this quarter, my genius hour is um, circuit. It's kind of just how you power stuff like electronics and TVs and just stuff like that. What I believe in is that um, it's students are accountable for their learning, but I'm 
the one that needs to be accountable for getting them excited about learning. Students' interests were captured by a vast array of different topics. I like watching movies, and so I wanted to make my own. And then I made a claymation movie, and it took me a long time to make the set. I like that I get to choose my own topic and do what I want with it. Genius Hour continues to provide kids with an outlet to channel their creativity. This has been Josh Buss and Michael Carter reporting with Encounter Shawnee Mission. Thank you, John and Michael. Now, we head to Rose Hill Elementary, where students are learning about the fun of science with Colin and Patrick Wilkinson. On November 10th, Rose Hill Elementary school kids were treated to a visit from the DuPont Science Organization. The DuPont Challenge is a writing competition, science writing actually. Uh, it was created 30 years ago to honor the crew of the Challenger space shuttle. This is a way of getting students to think critically, to write about science, uh, and to become effective communicators of scientific theory. Representatives from DuPont showed kids the importance of science while also having some fun and handing out some prizes. After trophies were handed out and the experiments were finished, the assembly was turned into a celebratory dance party. Well, the assembly was great. It, it was like very exciting. I was shaking a little bit, but it was very exciting to see so much experiments. I thought it was great and I'm glad DuPont took the time to award us and give us the prize and give us experiments and that was really nice of them. For more information on the DuPont Science Organization, go to challenge.dupont.com. This is Colin Wilkinson and Patrick Wilkinson, and this has been Encounter Shiny Mission. Such cool stuff, that science. But I like my science a little crazier, like Frankenstein. Huh, I don't know about that. But over at Deemer Elementary, Stefan Seaman and Jackie Stidham learn about math science. Every Monday after school, students at John Deemer Elementary participate in mad science. Today, teams of students will work together to complete a simulation of the International Space Station. The simulation teaches students how to work together in teams. Each student is assigned to create an individual piece of the end product. Once the pieces are assembled, the students will have built a model of the International Space Station. Students and teachers alike were excited to be involved in fun activities combining teamwork and science. You'll learn how to connect the pieces the right way and how you build in groups and how to agree on stuff and how you learn together to make space stations and boats and other stuff that's actually pretty much fun. Students at John Deemer Elementary can get involved in mad science by signing up at the front office. This has been Stefan Seaman reporting with Encounter Shawnee Mission. You know what helps me cool down after a day of mad science? Legos? Exactly. Let's head over to Oak Park Carpenter with Molly Whisker and Corinne Carroll, where we're going to learn about Lego robotics. This year, Oak Park Carpenter students have the opportunity to become a part of First Lego League. Here's the sponsor, Jamie Corral, telling us how it started at OPC. So a couple years ago, Lego League was, um, was a thing, and they did science and tech night here, and they advertised that any kid who was really into STEM or, um, you know, really loved building Legos, this was a group for them. And then it went away for a couple of years, and I have a third grader this year, and we thought, let's resurrect it. They are given different challenges to complete depending on their age group. So our Oak Park Carpenter Lego League is split into two. We have the juniors, which is kindergarten through second grade, and then we have third graders through fifth graders. Um, so the kindergartners and second graders work, um, they have these really awesome little engineering notebooks, and it's a wonderful little Lego curriculum to follow. And we work together as a team to build little projects, and we will go to more like a science fair competition more than the robotics challenge. And then they'll build up eventually to the robotics challenge that the third through fifth graders do on the other side of the cafeteria that they practice. Here's Coach Craig walking us through the robotics challenge board that they will use at competition. So first they're trying to get the, the robot to go over there and move the shark tank. So they're trying to take it from that one square and move it over to the other square. And another challenge is to make it go along that walkway. 
And then when it gets over to the, the little person with the dog at the crosswalk, if the robot drives across the crosswalk, it makes the dog sit, and then they've accomplished the next goal. The other one, there's about five or six other challenges, but one of them is having the robot drive over to the beehive, and if they can put the bee on top of the beehive, then it makes the honey fall out, and then they accomplish that challenge too. FLL is an exciting social and educational STEM enrichment opportunity. For more information about First Lego League, visit kcfirst.org. This has been Corinna Molly with Encounter Shawnee Mission signing off. That was great. Thank you, Molly and Corinne. We move now to Indian Woods Middle School where Jeff Nassi and Benji Smith had the story on Red Ribbon Week. Good morning, this is Mrs. Deer King reporting about our Red Ribbon Week for Student Council. Today is our crazy clothes, crazy socks, and wild hair day. I hope you see me in the hall because I went all out. This week, the last week of October, is always Red Ribbon Week, which is against drugs and alcohol. So we have our theme is a bright future is possible when you're drug and alcohol free. Today, they pay a dollar. It's crazy clothes, crazy socks, crazy hair. This is not my usual look. I don't want to be. Uh, right now we have like a little fundraiser where we have buckets for each team. So there's seven, one, seven, two, eight, three, and eight, four. And basically, if you put dollar bills in one of the buckets, that's um, good for your team, and it just raises awareness for uh, no drugs and no alcohol. All right, we would like to reach our goal of $500. Last year, we had some different activities, and I think we raised maybe 350 So we were wanting to exceed that and get to 500 this year. So we'll see how it goes. This has been Ben Smith and Jeffrey Nassi reporting with Encounter Shawnee Mission, signing off. Thank you, Jeff and Benji. Why are you breathing so hard? I took a lap around the studio, but I'm really tired and out of shape. I don't think I like running very much. Well, Jack Stahlbomber and Samabaloos may change your mind with the video about the fun run at Brookwood Elementary. Twice a year, students from Brookwood Elementary participate in a fun run at Rope Park. Laura Elzenrat has helped organize the fun run since her daughter started at Brookwood. My third year helping with the running club, and it's such a great program just because it kind of empowers kids, like showing them that they can run, you know, more than just sprinting a little bit. So we meet like in the mornings um, once a week for about six or seven weeks, and then we end with this fun run, which is just their chance to see if they can kind of pace themselves and go like this bigger distance that they've never probably gone before. Um, it's a two-mile race. The fun run is a two-mile run around the wooded paths of Rope Park. At the end of the run, students receive treats for their hard work. It just gives me a chance to like express myself with running and test myself to see what I can do. Running's fun because my mom does it and she really inspires me. Um, and I personally love it because I'm a runner too, so it's fun just to see these kids, you know, just feeling so empowered and get so excited, especially, you know, at the finish line when they've maybe run a full two miles that they've never been able to do before. So I, I love seeing that in the kids. This has been Samal Baluz and Jack Stahlmeyer with Encounter Shawnee Mission. All right, finally we turn back to Shawnee Mission South High School. There, a program called Hoops for Hope is taking place. Let's go to Anton Caruso and Sam Schneck with the story. This year, Shawnee Mission South was invited to participate in Hoops for Hope, a fundraiser to help raise money for families whose children are fighting cancer. Participants make a team, dress up, and compete in a half-court, 10-minute, four-on-four basketball game where the winning team advances to the next round. Here's Cynthia Hartwell, leader of student council at Shawnee Mission South on the fun basically. Um, I became involved with Hoops for Hope this year because our students were kind of the main student leaders of it, or among the main student leaders of it. Um, and I thought it was a really neat event. I hear from the other schools that we were of a new school to participate, that we brought in more participants than any other new school. And I think that everybody that participated had a ton of fun um, and I hope that we can keep this rolling as a yearly event because it was a lot of fun. 
Students and teachers, good and bad at basketball, came out to support the cause. If you want more information, visit their website at hoopsforhopeusa.com. Reporting with Encounter Shawnee Mission, this has been Anton Caruso. Thank you, Anton and Sam. I'm Caroline Shelton. And I'm Noah Berkeley. You've been watching Encounter Shawnee Mission. We'll see you next time.